I read now from Beverly Hills 90210 Senior Year. Novelization by Mel Gilden, based on teleplays and stories by Karen Rosen, Steve Wasserman, and Jessica Klein, and Starf Roman, based on the television series created by Darren Starr. Chapter 2 A Special Girl after school, Sue Scanlon went into the girls' bathroom and hastily transformed herself from the swinging woman of the world she was in school into the mommy's little girl she had to be at home. Off went the makeup and the earrings, down went the hemline, snap went the buttons. Changing one way every morning and the other way every night was a drag, but it was the only way she could manage her life. Nobody in school would have liked her the way her mom dressed her, and her mom would never have stood for the fashions Sue chose for herself. As hard as she tried to please her mother, it seemed that Sue never did enough. Most of the time, her mother compared her with her brother, Scott. But Scott had an advantage. He was dead, and therefore could do no wrong. He'd accidentally shot himself the year before while showing off a pistol. Not only could he do no wrong now, but in the selective memory of her mother, he had been a saint even in life. Recently, Sue found herself being more and more jealous of him. Death seemed like the easy way out. To make matters even worse, she was failing English. Mr. Myers said she would do better if she came to class more often, but she didn't think that would help. She was just stupid, and Mr. Myers didn't like her. Probably nothing would help. Besides, Despite the distaste she knew Mr. Myers had for her, she liked him a lot. He always overcompensated for his dislike by talking kindly to her. Which was a nice change from the crap she usually got at home, even if it wasn't real. She went home and found her mom in Scott's room pretending to be plumping the pillows on his bed, but Sue knew she'd been mooning over Scott's photo again. She could do it for hours. Except for the occasional dusting and pillow plumping, she'd left the room exactly the way it had been on the day Scott had died. It was kind of like a shrine. A shrine for St. Scotty. Sue hated competing with a dead brother who could do no wrong. Sue walked into the bedroom. Hi, Mom, she said with all the cheer she could manage. Mrs. Scanlon barely glanced in her direction. You're late, she said angrily. Being late was a big deal in the Scanlon home. Judging by the lectures she frequently received, Sue had concluded that her mother feared she wouldn't meet with an accident as meaningless as the one Scott had fallen prey to. It was difficult for Sue to decide whether her mom didn't trust her or didn't trust the universe. Sue tried to put a casual spin on her tardiness. Only four minutes and thirteen seconds, she said gaily. Mrs. Scanlon glared at her. Are you making fun of me? Sue sighed. Getting along with her mother was as hopeless as passing English. No, Sue said. She had almost escaped from the room when Mrs. Scanlon called after her. And you can forget about going out the rest of the week, and next week too, for that matter. But Mom, Sue cried. She couldn't stand being in this house. Your Uncle Ernest is arriving tomorrow. He'll be sleeping here, in Scotty's room. In the shrine, Sue thought. She was surprised her mother didn't keep Scott's bones in a shoebox or something. Why can't he stay downstairs in the den? Sue asked desperately. You haven't let anybody touch this room since Scott... When you have your own home and family, you can decide where everyone sleeps. Mrs. Scanlon picked up Scott's picture and stared at it lovingly. In a way, she never looked at Sue. Sue took this opportunity to run quickly from the room. She didn't care to hear again how Ernest had been Scott's favorite uncle, and how Scott would have wanted it this way. Going to school the next morning was a relief for Sue. Everybody hated her, but it didn't matter so much. She could lose herself in the crowd. Mr. Myers asked her to see him at lunch about her English grade. It wouldn't do any good, but Sue would go anyway. Maybe he would pretend he liked her. She would enjoy that. When she entered the room... Mr. Myers was sitting at his desk, eating an apple. He invited her in and suggested she sit down. He sat on the front of his desk with one leg dangling. He was very handsome. He asked her kindly what her problem was, 
and she explained that she didn't do well in groups, and that she would like to do an independent study assignment. Mr. Myers smiled. Can't do it, Sue. I'm stuck following the curriculum, just like you are. Did you talk to Mrs. Teasley? Mr. Myers had a really beautiful voice. It was warm and sexy. She could listen to him talk for days. But the memory of Mrs. Teasley made her angry, and the tears began to come. It seemed that some days all she did was cry. Embarrassed, she went to close the door. She leaned against it and shook her head. Mrs. Teasley hates me. I begged her not to call my mother, but she wouldn't listen. Mr. Myers nodded as if he understood. You're really going through a tough patch right now, aren't you? I mean, so what if I flunk out? The worst that could happen is that my mom would die of shame at having such a deadbeat for a daughter. And that wouldn't really be so bad, Sue thought. Do you think you're a deadbeat? Mr. Myers asked. Sometimes I think I'd be better off dead. It should have been me and not my brother that... She suddenly didn't want to talk about this any more. I'm sorry, she said, hoping he would drop the subject. But he didn't. Sorry for what? he asked. For being honest? Everybody feels rotten sometimes. The trick is to focus on the good things in your life, the things worth sticking around for. Like what? There's nothing. Well, said Mr. Myers as he shrugged, there's me. If you weren't around, you'd be missing out on me. Sue laughed, which surprised her a little. She didn't think she had another laugh in her. Are you conceited or what? she said. Of course I am, Mr. Myers said happily. He extracted a tissue from a box on his desk and went to her with it. Did I detect a smile there? he asked as he wiped the tears from her cheeks. Sue was confused. I came to talk to you about my grade, and you try to cheer me up. You really are... She searched for the right word. Different. He set his hands firmly on her shoulders and looked into her eyes, confusing her more. Could it be that he actually liked her? You're different too, Sue, Mr. Meyer said. A very special girl. You just need to believe it. Maybe Mr. Myers already liked her a little. She would make him like her more. To be liked by Mr. Myers was more important than any grade he could give her. Her time with Mr. Myers didn't work out the way Sue had planned. Crying again, she ran from his room and down the nearly empty hall. She hated herself, she hated him, she hated everybody. The only other person around was that weird Andrea Zuckerman. Their eyes locked for a moment, and Sue was afraid that Andrea was about to speak to her. But Sue ran on, not giving her a chance. By the time she got home, Sue was calmer, but otherwise did not feel any better. She had given up hope of anything ever going right for her. Briefly, she considered walking right past her house, maybe out to the beach and into the ocean. The only thing that prevented her from trying was the thought that she would somehow botch drowning, too, and only have to apologize to her mother again. Sue snuck past the living room, where her mother was watching home videotapes of family barbecues during happier times. Scott, of course, was the star. Sue thought she might actually make it to her room without a confrontation with her mother. When she, Sue thought she might actually make it to her room without a confrontation when her mother called to her angrily. Sue stood stiffly in the doorway. Certainly, this had something to do with Mrs. Teasley. Mrs. Scanlon put down the TV remote and stood up to face Sue. Why? she asked. That is my one question. Why? Why what? Sue asked. Don't play games. I want an answer. Sue sighed. Is this about Mrs. Teasley? No, Sue. Mrs. Teasley called, but this is about you. It didn't matter. Nothing mattered. You want to know why I'm such a royal screw-up? She spoke as if the whole thing were a joke. Nothing mattered. Probably there was a mix-up at the hospital. Some other mother got your nice, normal baby, and you got the Looney Tune. I don't want to hear that kind of talk from you. They glared at each other for a moment. Resistance was useless. So what did Mrs. Teasley say? Sue asked. You know what she said. She told you she was going to call me. 
What I want to know is what happened to the little Susie who enjoyed school and was proud of her accomplishments. She waited. Sue said nothing. She had no answer her mother would understand. The truth was that Sue didn't understand very well either. Everything was so mixed up in her head, she needed some time to figure things out. A few years, maybe. Maybe your Uncle Ernest will have better luck with you. He'll be here soon. I said I was sorry. I don't know what you want from me. I want you to be happy, that's all. It had not occurred to her for a long time that her mother wanted her to be happy. Maybe it was true. Maybe her mom was a screw-up just like she was. Sue began to sniffle and rub tears from her eyes. Mrs. Scanlon came and put her hands on Sue's shoulders, just as Mr. Myers had done. But where Mr. Myers seemed concerned, Mrs. Scanlon looked worried. "'What happened, Sue?' she asked. "'We used to talk about everything.' "'Had something happened in school?' She remembered running down the hallway, crying. Something must have happened. Then she remembered the big eyes, the groping hands, the sudden anxiety, and the release when she escaped from the room. She had done nothing wrong, but it seemed very important to keep it a secret. He had told her it was a secret. He told her that bad things would happen if she told. Something happened in school today, Sue said. Something bad, but you have to promise not to tell anybody. Promise, please. She broke down into her mother's arms, and her whole body shook when she cried.